Woman must not accept, she must challenge. She must not be awed by that which has been built up around her, she must reverence that woman in her which struggles for expression. Against the state, against the church, against the silence of the medical profession, against the whole machinery of dead institutions of the past, the woman of today arises. The undeniably feeble-minded should, indeed, not only be discouraged but prevented from propagating their kind. No woman can call herself free who does not control her own body. Woman must have her freedom, the fundamental freedom of choosing whether or not she will be a mother and how many children she will have. Regardless of what man's attitude may be, that problem is hers, and before it can be his, it is hers alone. Diplomats make it their business to conceal the facts. She goes through the veil of death alone, each time a babe is born. As it is the right neither of man nor the state to coerce her into this ordeal, so it is her right to decide whether she will endure it. It now remains for the United States government to set a sensible example to the world by offering a bonus or a yearly pension to all obviously unfit parents who allow themselves to be sterilized by harmless and scientific means. The marriage bed is the most degenerative influence in the social order. Has knowledge of birth control, so carefully guarded and so secretly practiced by the women of the wealthy class, and so tenaciously withheld from the working women, brought them misery rather, has it not promoted greater happiness, greater freedom, greater prosperity and more harmony among them. The women who have this knowledge are the women who have been free to develop, free to enjoy in its best sense, and free to advance the interests of the community, covertly invest into non-white areas, invest in ghetto abortion clinics, help to raise money for free abortions, in primarily non-white areas. Perhaps abortion clinic syndicates throughout North America, that primarily operate in non-white areas and receive tax support, should be promoted. The most successful educational approach to the Negro is through a religious appeal. We do not want word to go out that we want to exterminate the Negro population, and the minister is the man who can straighten out that idea if it ever occurs to any of their more rebellious members. The masses of Negroes particularly in the South, still breed carelessly and disastrously, with the result that the increase among Negroes, even more than among whites, is from that portion of the population least intelligent and fit. Blacks, soldiers, and Jews are a menace to the race. How are we to breed a race of human thoroughbreds unless we follow the same plan? We must make this country into a garden of children instead of a disorderly backlot overrun with human weeds. Eugenics is, the most adequate and thorough avenue to the solution of racial, political and social problems. Negroes and Southern Europeans are mentally inferior to native-born Americans. No woman can call herself free who does not own and control her body. No woman can call herself free until she can choose consciously whether she will or will not be a mother. The most merciful thing a large family can do to one of its infant members is to kill it. The emergency problem of segregation and sterilization must be faced immediately. Every feeble-minded girl or a woman of the hereditary type, especially of the moron class, should be segregated during the reproductive period way prefer the policy of immediate sterilization, of making sure that parenthood is absolutely prohibited to the feeble-minded. I accepted an invitation to talk to the women's branch of the Ku Klux Klan. Every single case of inherited defect, every malformed child, every congenitally tainted human being brought into this world is of infinite importance to that poor individual, but it is of scarcely less importance to the rest of us and to all of our children who must pay in one way or another for these biological and racial mistakes. Birth control is the first important step woman must take toward the goal of her freedom. It is the first step she must take to be man's equal. It is the first step they must both take toward human emancipation. I think the greatest sin in the world is bringing children into the world that have disease from their parents, that have no chance to be a human being, practically. Delinquents, prisoners, all sorts of things just marked when they're born. That to me is the greatest sin, that people can, can commit. Birth control is nothing more or less than, 
weeding out the unfit.